You homo, dirty faggot. Clear, dyke. Sissy. Sissy girl, a freak. I was picked on on a daily basis. For most of my childhood, I'd actually hid who I was inside. I was walking down the hall. Um, and, you know, just minding my own business, one of these bullies uh, did a whole body check, and I was carrying a bunch of books, and he just jumped up, gave me a body check, called me a fag, and I was left there in the middle of the hallway with books and all my stuff covered everywhere. I remember seriously running home as soon as school was finished, as fast as I could to try to avoid any confrontation. experienced hazing at the hands of some girls who were supposedly my friends because I wasn't I wasn't enough of a girl. I got so tired of my father beating me up and calling me a fag I finally told him look if you you can do this to me all you want but you're, unless you're gonna kill me you're never gonna change who I am. Hey guys, Rise of a Guy like here. Uh, I just want to support the Trevor Project and Rise of Gaming for supporting the Trevor Project. It means a lot to me as it's close to my heart. For many years, I was never really comfortable with my body. I never really understood why I felt the way I did. My parents, my family, even my sister, they always pushed me to be someone who I wasn't. They told me that it was just a phase. They told me that I would grow out of it. They told me that it wasn't right for me to feel this way and that it was wrong. I never really believed them. I kept on being who I was deep down inside. You're trying to be lost in this, this mess of people, and so to be pointed out that way, it was horrible. I already felt like I didn't fit in. I already felt like no one could ever understand me. And then these people made it their personal mission to push me away even further. Growing up, I didn't really think I was that different. I didn't really fit the typical mold of female, but I knew I was still a girl. So when a guy came along and said that he was in love with me, I took the first option that I had. Like, why bother with all this dating? And why go through all this heartbreak that people talk about? I just went along with a guy just because I thought it was the thing to do. I was young, I was impulsive, and I said, okay, let's, let's go do this. Um, turns out things didn't work out so well, not necessarily because he was a guy. He had some other challenges of his own, but he would always accuse me of having lesbian tendencies as if it were a bad thing. The most hurtful thing is when you're called a fag. Yeah, I definitely got teased, especially when I was younger. You know, you got called fag and stuff, and I feel like at least like externally, I was okay, but like, I kind of didn't like myself at all. Hello, my name is Ben. In many games I go by Royal Sexy, probably due to me being such a pretty princess. I grew up in Queensland, Australia, uh, and when I was about 12 years old, I started noticing, as did all my school friends, that there was a difference between girls and boys. Unfortunately, I didn't like the right type. I tried really hard to be normal and fit in, and I did a decent job, though not perfect. There were two boys in my high school that decided it would be a fun game to hit me every day. Eventually, I flipped out and uh, scared the crap out of them. Inside, I was in so much pain, though. I joined a rather cult-like church uh, locally, convinced that I was going to die before I hit my 20s, and I thought that heaven sounded like a pretty good idea. Their ideas of abstinence gave me a pretty good excuse to not have sex with the girls that I dated to keep my cover. Eventually, I did give my virginity to a girl, and it was... yeah. I got to one point where one day 
I just had enough and I went home to my parents and I just said, I'm not going back to that school. It comes to a point where it becomes unbearable and you have to just be what you want to be. So I would look at a girl on TV and go, hey, she's kind of cute. And he didn't think that that was normal. He said that being gay wasn't normal, which really kind of confused me because I knew people who were gay, lesbian, transgender. It doesn't matter. Gender doesn't really define how I relate to people, nor should it for how I would ask them to relate to me. I don't care who you're attracted to. If you're a cool person, I'm, I'm cool with you. Finally, it just broke free. I told them I, I wasn't going to take it. I told them that I was who I was, and if they didn't love me anymore, then I would understand because they were still my family. Enough is enough. I have to do this for me. I can't hide anymore. to your friends, there's coming out to your, you know, family, there's coming out to your parents, there's coming out to your workplace, there's and coming, coming out to yourself. And coming out to yourself, so it's a process. One of the things that was very difficult is actually coming out to my parents, um, which I eventually did um, when I graduated high school. Um, unlike, I'm sure, a lot of the stories that, you know, are probably out there right now, um, my story is slightly different and kind of went a little bit more roundabout, I suppose, and part of the reason for that is because I'm transgender. So when I came out to my parents, I was still presenting as male, or at least attempting to, and not succeeding particularly well at it. And they didn't take it very well. And I was in counseling for a good number of years, um, and we got into a lot of fights, and it was not a very fun time for me, and actually I'd lost pretty much all of my friends. And by the end of it, I was essentially estranged by my own parents um, for probably about five years or so. Uh, it was probably the most frightening thing in the world. It took over a year of just thinking about it, thinking, how am I going to tell them? I'm scared out of my mind, like scared out of my mind. Then I went to uni, and for the first time, I uh, knew some openly gay students and uh, lecturers. It was like a shroud had lifted from my eyes. These guys were deviant, or unhappy, or hiding. I started dating guys and met some really lovely ones that I could open my heart to. Well, I was sure that once I told everybody, everybody would just totally abandon me. When I first came out, my mother said, well, no matter what, we love you. And these are the most important words. One night I just had a couple too many beer and I called them and I told them. And even though on the other end they were all crying, it was like this great big knot had just disappeared out of my chest and it was like, wow. It's amazing how we hold things uh, in our body. I did tell a few of my uh, uh, few friends and they simply just abandoned me. It unfortunately got worse after that um, because after that initial sort of issues and problems that I had with my parents, I ended up essentially getting assaulted and part of the, part of the reason for that was because I was young, um, I was trans and seen as basically an easy target. And I was basically told that they just assumed I was a prostitute because I was young and I guess they figured they could, they could do whatever they wanted to me because they figured I was just some like street kid or something. And um, that sort of set off this whole downward spiral for me where um, it, just, it just kept getting worse and worse. It was just like I just couldn't deal with a lot of the things that were happening to me. And um, that, you know, that sort of led into sort of like this set into doing a lot of drugs and... Um, it was it was a very difficult time for me, and I, you know, I slept around a lot. I didn't know I didn't know who I was or what I was doing anymore. I just kind of reacted to life and to everything. At the end of it all, um, when I was in New Orleans, uh, it sort of culminated in me trying to kill myself, and I basically found myself essentially covered in my own blood because um, I cut myself very deeply and I had to be hospitalized and um, that necessitated a stay at a mental hospital which was very uh, sort of the lowest point in my life at that point. I figured I couldn't possibly get any lower and at that point I figured there was there was really no, nothing left for me so you know when I finally did get out um, you know I, I got even worse than I was before um, pretty much if there was a drug out there that I could do I did it. First of all I was scared to death 
for no good reason as it turns out. I came out to my parents when I was 24. I did that after I won the Olympics. It didn't go very well. I consider the process of coming out as liberation, freedom. It's very liberating to come out. It's very liberating not to have to lie. And if you're not out, you are lying all the time. It was like a giant weight had been taken off my shoulders when I sat down with my mum and had dinner with her. And actually, she said the words. She said to me, you're gay, darling. And I'm like, yes. It was like a clarity. It was like if you're just, you've got mud on your windshield, it was gone. I won't allow myself to be bullied anymore. But that has come from being confident in who I am and, and accepting who I am. Um, my friends, they did support me. I did get a community together, or a small one, of course, and uh, we did help each other out. It wasn't until I actually ran into a group of people that were sort of in a very similar place to me. I mean, they weren't trans like me, but um, they all seemed to have their own issues. There were some people that were queer there. Uh, there were some people that were, you know, just you know, they were dealing with their own issues, like a friend of mine actually had lost another friend of his to suicide, um, another one had lost, um, you know, someone that was very close to them, and we were all kind of hurting together. But as a result of that, though, we actually started to kind of grow as a community, and um, we actually built a life for ourselves that was built around us trying to help each other out of this sort of nightmare that we'd all kind of found ourselves in. I never thought I'd find anybody or figure out who I am. I thought I was destined to be lonely and confused. I mean, I've got this guy by nature and I've had uh, three serious relationships in my life for the latest lasting eight years. Um, the most important virtue to me is honesty. It isn't all sunshine and roses for me still, but screw the haters. You have to be who you are. Don't compromise your honesty to fit anyone's idea of who you should be. It gets better. It gets better. My life is full of friends and full of family. I have an incredible supportive family now. There are so many people who have persevered and dealt with the struggles and who have been liberated from the kind of bullying and the kind of circumstances that you might be facing today. It wasn't until I found Rise of Gaming that I truly understood that I was not alone and it does get better. And that's true for you as well. It does get better and you're never alone. So please keep on keeping on. In my son's class, a lot of the kids say, I have two moms. And they don't, but they wish they did. If you're young and you're being bullied, you think that it's the end of the world. Well, I'm here to tell you that it gets better. You have no idea that sometimes you're going through some really rough times, but those rough times are just making you a stronger person. It gets better. Wait till you jump over that hill and you'll definitely see something much more fabulous and much more rewarding. It took reaching out to my community that she was part of, that a lot of our good friends are part of, that they really helped me question who I was, where I was, what I was doing, what I really wanted out of life, and helped me awaken to the fact that there could be more outside these four walls. There is more to life than just trying to live up to everybody's expectation of girl and guy. And it was through the supportive community that I met the love of my life. And we got married and now we're living the dream. We are really happy with each other and we have the prospect of a happy, adventurous life together. So yeah, it took, just reaching out to your friends, talking to people, just examining yourself, trying to figure out who you really are and making decisions based on that and not what people expect of you. That is how it gets better. Dealing with the, the, the kids beating me up and pushing me into lockers and calling me a fag, it felt like at that moment it would never get better. But I promise you, it does get better. In fact, it gets so much better. And because of that community, um, you know, I was actually able to sort of get out of a lot of the situation I was in. And eventually, I finished my degree. Um, I have a degree in computer science now. 
Um, and as soon as I graduated from college, I was able to get a job out on the East Coast. Um, and since then, my life has improved markedly. Uh, I haven't really had a lot of the same problems I had before. So it's one of those situations where, you know, in my case, it really, it really did get better. Um, and it's just one of those things that it's like you just kind of have to stick it through. I didn't think that at the time, and it nearly killed me. But, you know, if I could have told my past self, you know, you know, anything, it's just basically just, just keep moving forward. You know, eventually, you know, things, you'll find, you'll find something that, that'll keep you grounded, that'll keep you wanting to keep going. And one day, um, you know, you find you're just living your life and you're just like everyone else and it's not as bad as it once was. So. The roughest years are your teen years. And what is so cool is that when you make it through your teen years, you now have control. Life gets way better. Uh, it actually can blow you away if you just hang in there. I think that there was a turning point in my life and it's when I decided to be myself, expose myself, be who I am, come out each year, kept getting sequentially better. Um, I met the love of my life. Uh. <laughs> and um, yeah, we, we eventually got married, as you can see here. So. <laughs> we have matching bracelets. And um, yeah, it's 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 been great. And but I mean, at the time, I wouldn't have thought that any of this would have been possible. Um, I didn't even think love was possible at the time. So I mean, it's I didn't think that I would ever find anyone ever. <laughs> so that's my story. <laughs> I mean, one thing about being gay is that it forces you to kind of look outside of the box, which is a good thing. This too shall pass. I know this is an old cliche, but it does. It makes you stronger. It makes you a better person. If you're feeling alone and afraid, I get it. But what I also get now is it gets better. By the time I was in my early 20s and I was seeing my friends from high school and things get married and settle down and have kids and things, I went, I got lucky. Everything passes. I think that was the one thing too that I tried to always keep hanging on to is that it could be the worst time of your life, but it always passes. I was an Olympic swimmer. I won the gold medal in Barcelona in 1992 in the 100 meter backstroke. I'm openly gay and it gets better. I would say it definitely gets better. It gets better. It gets better. It gets better. It does get better. It gets better. That is how it gets better. It definitely gets better. <laughs> it gets so much better. It gets a hell of a lot better. In my case, it really, it really did get better. It just gets better. It does get better. Screw the haters. You have to be who you are. Don't compromise your honesty to fit anyone's idea of who you should be. It gets better. I found Bryce Gaming that I truly understood that I was not alone and it does get better and that's true for you as well it does get better and you're never alone so please keep on keeping on <laughs>